Healing for peace or really praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Kali Moon Dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy? Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. And welcome to the latest edition of Global Atheist News Review. This is where we have the panel of opinionated people express their opinions on this week's news about how religion has impacted humanity over the past seven days. And this week's panel of opinionated people, I love the alliteration there, includes D.P. Higgs from British Columbia, how the devil are you, DP? How the devil are you, indeed? <laughs> I'm not having you take over my catchphrase all the time. <laughs> we have Scott Weigold from California. How the devil are you, Scott? The devil in me is good. <laughs> Tercio is with us. She's my co-host. Welcome, Tercio. Let's hope, let's pray for no, what do you call it? Load shedding load shedding oh, no, right. we, i am i am the light tonight i have okay. the light. <laughs> i'm pleased you are excellent and frank is in uh kentucky and this is uh ty who's in tennessee so we have a full a full global audience and behind the scenes we have our producer swedish steve so guys let's hit the road running Here's item number one. Three demonstrators have been killed during clashes with the Iranian security forces in the western town of Mahabad. Sorry, Steve, do you want to join us on screen? I see you've come up on camera now. No? Okay. <laughs> right. The protesters were targeting government buildings after attending the memorial ceremony of a man who was killed during the unrest in the country. And security forces have also opened fire at a cemetery near another town in Iran called Karamabad. And the, the rights wing group, sorry, the rights group, not rights wing, the rights group, Amnesty International, says that in total, the security forces in Iran have killed eight people since Wednesday. What do you think of that, guys? The protesters, they're being killed by the state security forces. So why why in a cemetery? I didn't understand that bit. Well, because I guess they were burying a victim of, oh, of, of the protests, you know. And the victims are mostly young women who were expressing their their uh, rejection of the states requiring yeah. them to, to wear hijabs you know right, right. so it's it's very sad hmm. well, you I, know. I a, go ahead scott I, I was going to say i have a question <laughs> I, i've been bombarding myself with uh, philosophy videos and I've, i watched the um german film all quiet on the western front last night and the one thing that i'm wondering about is uh, what would happen if we could go after the manufacturers of armaments and prevent security police from getting bullets and guns and other forms of ammunition uh, would would that be at all feasible? Because I'm I'm beginning to get to the point where I'm asking, protesting isn't working. Protesters are being killed. Can't we just stop the weapons? Well, that's a question for an American, I think, because America loves uh, well, having well, freedom. I'm, I'm happy to answer that. The answer. Oh, is oh great. It's, okay, come in, it, Frank. It's feasible, but it would be wrong to do. It's uh, taking the short way out. It's kind of taking the terrorist way out. Terrorists, you know, if they're mad as heck at this fellow right here but can't get at him, they'll take out his neighbors. Uh, you know, 
I'm thinking that that's fair and that'll solve the problem. It'll probably meet his objectives. Uh, if you take down the manufacturers of weapons, which, by the way, uh, have powerful use when you're being attacked by somebody, if you take those away, you're, you're addressing, you're, you're solving the problem the wrong way, in my opinion, and the opinion of many of my fellow Americans. And no doubt, uh, in the absence of guns, there would be machetes, knives, uh, rakes, uh, hose, whatever. That's an excellent, an excellent point. And if, if yeah. somebody's going to kill me, please shoot me. Don't use that machete. Yeah. You right. know, I mean, let's be reasonable here. Also, like when we take away ability for a governing a governing body, if a governing body is powerful enough to do that, they become substantially more powerful in the aftermath. And so, like, we're talking about, you know, potential fascist governments, authoritarianisms. If they have the ability to take away any sort of like um, reprisal by the people that they're trying to govern, that could be a lot of problems too. Just, just basically, all these things don't happen in a vacuum. It's an excellent point. Yeah, you got to remember in history, if you look look at the history of nations and societies, very, very few societies that were unarmed citizenry benefited. They're usually the victims. Uh, Nazi Germany being a good example. Well, welcome, Esther. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, but it, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? All these American views about the freedom of access to weaponry, it makes you wonder how Europe has managed to survive without any guns. What's going on? Scott, give us some insight into this. Well, yeah, I was I was thinking exactly that. We do, in fact, have quite a few nations around the world that have dramatically less access to guns than America. And we've got a similar um, population in Australia that has yep. not deteriorated into complete fascism after buying back a large yep. section, uh, you know, a particular type of uh, firearms. Yep. And so I have, I, 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 I do have trouble with the idea that, you know, reducing access to firearms leads to things like Nazi Germany. I think there were lots of things, and I think the the access to guns was one step, but it was it was not the first step, and it was not the critical step. Um, I just don't see much evidence that Germans were by the time that the guns were taken away. I don't see that much evidence that Germans were getting ready to revolt against the government actions anyway. So, uh, Godwin's law aside, um, back to the actual news item at hand, it's, it's horrific, um, and certainly uh, there's no way for uh, Americans or even the Western world to stop uh, the access to weapons for that government because they can get them from other places. Yep. But well, the, the actions of starting to shoot their own people for protesting against the government is another step in desperation. And while I certainly mourn for the people that are killed and the families that are left, uh, to me, it's a sign that the government itself is crumbling. Well, well, the, 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 I just want to make a point that we, we started this conversation uh, discussing government using firearms against their citizenry. Uh, and, uh, you know, that, that's, that's a very different problem from citizens right. using guns against each other. True yeah. Enough. Agreed. Indeed. Well, so it, it seems that um, the situation will continue and unless, so so basically my thinking is there's, there's two ways of approaching this. The, the one way is changing people's minds, but that takes a long time. It takes a lot of effort and it, 
it needs uh, basically it's a long term solution. In the meantime, in the short term, people are dying in the process of changing the minds of other people. And I'm just wondering how how can one address that situation um, by doing something more than just well, I suppose we can't do really anything, but I think there should be more emphasis on uh, worldwide on teaching people how to talk to one another and teaching all people how to talk about difficult topics. And that should be, which is going to be a difficult thing to do um, per se, if you have people who don't want to talk because they just want to enforce what they believe. Oh. I think that the, the elephant in the room is the religion. It's the religion wow. that's backing all of this, right? Because this religion, you know, um, um, as far as I know, Islam is such that you can't separate government and religion, right? Yeah. You have to. They, they come as one package. Yes. You can't have that separation. And as long as you have that, if you have no separation of religion and your uh, your government, then unfortunately, this is what will happen, right? I feel like the revolution has begun, but because they've gone so many years of having this, uh, um, this government and this rule and this power, it will take time. But it, it has started slowly, slowly, but surely you will get there, hopefully, if the people just keep on, you know, just keep on at it and not giving up. I hope but you're right. It's, it's just the loss, the loss of lives, the loss of property, the mm. loss of, um, uh, you know, just people being displaced. It's, it's. <sighs> it won't happen overnight, but it it, it looks like, at least it may yeah. be starting. And yeah. the Turkey is just, about Scott, I would like to hear your opinion. Um, and Esther, I agree with you 100%. But I think the, the elephant in the room is religion. Thanks. But there's something that holds that elephant in place. And we need to educate people about that. And in my opinion, that something that keeps the elephant in place is the, the fact that so few people understand how our human brains work and how we have this constant longing for a greater being. Um, and I'm referring to the work of Dr. Wathy, it's W-A-T-H-E-Y. And if we can begin to make people understand that religion is something that is innate to the way we see and live in the world, but we can, uh, it's because we have this desire to be taken care of that we have evolved over many millions of years and we need to see that in ourselves and only then can we begin to say can we not find other ways of fulfilling that need for, fulfilling that need for society fulfilling that need for community you don't need an outside power firstly there isn't one um, when you're a baby the outside power is the mother but when you grow up there is no more mother to take care of you and you have to grow out of your infant um, needs and that we need to begin to have that conversation and make people understand that that's why we are religious and then you begin to dismantle religion and we plan that sorry but tessa, tessa you're talking about the mother right when you detach from the mother as a baby as far as these people are concerned, the role of the mother is in the kitchen. The role of the mother is no longer uh, important, right? It's the men that run things now, right? Where's the role of the mother in all of this? I bet that if you allowed women in on this to weigh in, I I'm sure you'll have a better, a better deal. But when you have men who think that they are in control, their religion allows them to dominate women, Yep. That's why you can see the brutality against women just for simply wearing, uh, not wearing uh, a hijab oh. properly. Yeah. It makes no sense, does it? Yeah, yeah. Well, I agree with you, girls. Absolutely. You're, you ladies, who I must call you John. John is going to take control. 
<laughs> well, I, I did a I did a psychoanalysis oh, is that, thing online. Is that, is that why is that why I'm at the bottom and John is on the <laughs> and old men are on the top? That's, mm -hmm. that's because that's because <laughs> <you're> <laughs> sure put the pirate at the bottom. <laughs> I'll take the bottom. Steve is in control. He can do everything behind the scenes. Thanks for being our producer tonight, Steve. Yeah, I agree with you, ladies. Here is, but. It's absolutely something that we should discuss in another program. It were it's worth giving a whole hour to these aspects of cu of culture, of humanity, and I want to get back to the news. <laughs> so so here we go with item number two, which is it spread, hasn't it? On Saturday. Gatherings were held in several world capitals, including Washington, where thousands of Iranians, you know, expat Iranians and their supporters have been marching. And it, this happened in Berlin. German police say there was uh, 80,000 Iranians w marching in Berlin. The organizers of that march put the number at closer to 100,000. And that's believed to have been the biggest so far held by the Iranian diaspora. But anyway, Iranians from across Europe have been chanting the slogan of the protesters. This is the slogan they've been using in Iran. And it's women, life and liberty. And that's what you've been talking about. Yes. And I think we should celebrate that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And it's fantastic that, that so many Iranians the world over are supporting their countrymen and it shows that there's no need to attack people who, who who do marches just let them march as long as they march peacefully just let them voice exactly. what they want to say um because i presume there were no um incidents of violence in in these marches well no because they were held in democratic countries not dictatorships <laughs> that that have a, an interest and in, a vested interest to defend Yep. Moving on to Israel. You know, that's a, a country that likes to be in our news. A 70-year-old Jewish Israeli name of Hagar Geffen. She was helping her friend harvest his olives. But this is on the West Bank of Jerusalem, you know. And he was a Palestinian farmer. And she was a Jewish Israeli. So masked settlers, the Israeli settlers, attacked her with clubs until she bled, then beat her in the head with rocks. She's currently hospitalized in a Jerusalem medical center with broken ribs and a punctured lung. What do you think about that, guys? Why, why did that happen? What was yeah, the reason why? Exactly. The reason, well, I, I don't know, because she was an Israeli helping the Palestinians and the Israeli settlers don't like that. They regarded her as a traitor, maybe. I, I, can't, I can't get into their head, I'm afraid. No, but I mean, that, that, but that explains what we know, right? That, that's just uh, so sad and so unnecessary, so wrong, uh, so misguided. Uh, it, what a huge misunderstanding on the part of those who did that. Yeah, absolutely. Can I, can I, can I just say, can I just say, this is this is a huge, huge problem when it comes to tribes and people claiming territories. This is our own. I, we're Jews, or we're blacks, and we're as much as I'm for people's rights. I'm, as much as I'm for, um, it's when your the ownership of your race the ownership of your tribe now borders on terrorism then it becomes problematic because yes own own what you have but then when people encroach now example a, in nigeria where i grew up as a child there are tribes that cannot intermarry there are tribes that cannot have business dealings with the other. Same country, 
same uh, uh, same race, but because you're from that tribe, you can't marry from this tribe. So people sometimes have to run to other countries if people want to get married, right? People yeah. from two tribes in the same state, mm. in the same state. And this is something I've never understood when people want to take ownership. Oh, this is mine and this is yours. You can't come over to mine and take over from mine. I don't, I don't know. It's just problematic. Absolutely. Yeah. Why do people do that? Anybody offering some suggestion? Well, you know, again, it, it goes back to this idea of blood and soil. Um, mm -hmm. The idea that, uh, you know, because traditionally you've been an occupant of a place or, you know, your past generations are that that somehow entitles you to the place forever uh, is no less a thing than claiming God gave it to you. Uh, yeah. Tribalism is bad all the way around. Yeah. What I find particularly heinous about this is that the people who, who perpetrated this attack didn't even have the the guts to show their faces. They masked them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how cowardly is that? So yeah. they they do this heinous thing, but they're not even willing to show who they are. That's just yeah. sickening. Yeah. Scott, do you want to come in here? Ty, what about you? Well, you, you've got a couple things going on here. I mean, the, the us versus them is probably one of the most ancient thoughts of humanity and, and quite frankly, um, the anthropoid uh, primates in general. Yeah. Uh, there's very strong uh, indications that this goes far back in our evolution. Yeah. Uh, much farther than the genus homo and yeah. so the, the the concept of tribes and tribalism and us versus them goes goes way far back um, yeah. much further than things like ownership uh, much further than things like religion um, yeah. and so combating that is even more difficult and the fact that it goes that deep makes it even more important to combat every day. Yeah. Yeah, we, we've got a long way to go to become properly civilized when somewhere deep in our subconscious, there's the behavior that is exemplified by cats like lions who have a strong tribal allegiance. In group, out group, right, that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh dear. So moving on. Sir Salman Rushdie. He's lost vision in one eye. This is the latest report. The update on his hospitalization following the stabbing in New York State back in August. His agent, Mr. Andrew Wiley, has reported that he's lost the vision in one eye and the use of one hand because the nerves in his arm were cut. He had three serious wounds in his neck and 15 in his chest. It was a truly brutal attack. And this is all because he, he wrote a book called The Satanic Verses mm -hmm. that some Muslims regard as blasphemous. It's they a miracle. Have they caught the people or the person or whoever that did it? Or yeah. straight, yes. yeah, immediately after it happened, he was yeah. in, he was uh, uh, apprehended and straight away taken to jail. So yes. I guess his uh, court date is coming soon. Okay, it's actually started. That's As why it it's in the news. Okay. That's why it's in the news today. And his his name is Hadi Matar. He's twenty four mm -hmm. years old. He's U.S. born, but a, a Muslim. And he has pleaded not guilty to attempted murder, despite having been videoed doing it. Mm. So he's I think that's probably, probably prove um, trying to go for the insanity plea. Yeah, that's what I was just going to ask. Mm. I don't. Know. I, I think. I, I think the plea is just a, a legal, um, a yeah. legal formality. I don't think it, it has anything to do with uh, the case, but. The, the the one thing that that sticks out for me is that this guy this this man is twenty four, 
and he grew up in America, but the indoctrination has not left him. Uh, he, despite growing up in a modern democracy, he, he's still indoctrinated that it's fine to kill somebody yeah. for expressing a different view. And that's, yes. very, that's very frightening because it yes. means that indoctrination can be superimposed upon the um, cultural um, uh, at, attributions. Um, it, it means that, that it's, it's passed down, it's inherited almost, it's passed down to the next generation. Mm. It is because um, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, uh, Salman Rushdie's book was written over thirty years ago, right? Nineteen eighty-eight. So, and he's only twenty-four. He wasn't even born when these <coughs> books were written. So, it's obviously been passed down to him. Yes. He probably yes. hasn't read the book himself. I mean, I, I don't. And, I, I, he probably no. hasn't. Read the book. And I think probably the one not. who the one who issued the fatwa. Uh, the the uh, the right, Muslim cleric, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, I think he is dead, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? Yeah. So Was he's it? he's he's issued this fatwa, he's yeah. long gone. Now yes. people who weren't born when this fatwa was issued have come yes. along now and are trying to um, uh, bring it to fruition. Yes. So but why are they doing that? I think the fellow that initiated the fatwa. Um, Relieved it, or or undid it, or yes, I think he did. Yeah, yes, so, he did. So yes. it doesn't. Yeah, I think it doesn't stand. And yet this fellow did it. But you got to remember, he's thinking that this fellow still insulted uh, my God, you know, mm -hmm. and, and my God is easily bruised, and I'm going to defend him, or mm -hmm. or whatever kind of logic goes. Yeah. So what was this guy trying to do? This um, what's his name? Hadi Matar. Was he trying to make a name for himself as some sort of martyr? Is that the thinking? The Swedish Steve just said there was a bounty was was still up for it. So I don't know. Mm. I just saw Steve. Uh, okay. Right can I yeah. can I just can I just say how pleased I am and how uh, wonderful. It was to learn that he's still alive, right. despite yes. all the, um, the the stabbing and everything yeah. he went through. Yes. And this is where we say thanks to the medical professionals, thanks Absolutely. to um, pe the people who um, acted, because they acted really quickly yes. to, to get a hold of that guy. There's no God involved here. Um, religious people at this point would have been thanking God for keeping him alive, but it is God that's causing people to do this. So, yes. um, you know, it, it's amazing that it didn't turn out uh, completely different because mm. now we would have been talking a completely different story, you know. Mm. So yeah. I am quite thankful. Some, something that, 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 that bothered me even as a Christian I always wondered why, if God is almighty, does he need people to stand yeah. up on his behalf if there's blasphemy yeah. against yeah. him? Of course. If, yeah. If, yeah. if God is almighty... It's all and being a gentleman, Tertia. Uh, um, <laughs> if other I people just, to do his dirty work, that's what yeah, you're saying. <laughs> so I just read this here. Um, the 15 Cordad Foundation maintains a multi-million dollar bounty on Rushdie. As wow. recently as 2012, the 15 Cordad Foundation increased the bounty on the author, bringing the sum, the total sum, from 2.7 million to 3.3 million. Wow! wow. So there, you know you go. there you have it. Not, not much good if you're in jail. Well, there's well, a lot well, of people I... that want 3.3 million bucks to kill him. So, well, I yeah. do hope. I do hope that when. Um, Mr. Rashmi, Rashmi eventually passes on, which I hope is in many years to come. Mm. I hope he then claims that money for his family and for whatever legacy he might want to leave because when he dies, I mean, surely he could claim that money. But hopefully he dies in his sleep in many years to come. But then he he should then um, get the bounty. I, I'm, also, I'm also hoping that the, uh, the book sales... Sorry. Sorry, Scott. Have, Sorry, Scott. Have, 
Did, did you just suggest that Salman Rushdie at the end of his life could commit suicide and claim <laughs> the money and give it to his family? That's a genius. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, technically, he doesn't have to commit suicide. I mean, he he can just die peacefully. In, in, oh, no, in no. I, I, think, I think there's got to be some element of active... Um, involvement there in order to become a martyr and it's quite difficult to become a martyr to yourself <laughs> well uh, uh, jesus did it didn't he yeah. oh yes jesus yes. did yes. I, i'm i'm hoping that the sales of his books have gone up and um has brought more attention i i had no clue about this book and now yeah. i'm interested and i'm going to get myself a copy Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. i've got it on oh. audible nice yeah you get it free there, probably. Well, back in August, just after, maybe it was September, just after the event, the incident, the event in which he was stabbed, we held a, a, an event here in, in London. I say here, I'm not in London, but 50 miles north in London, which I attended and I spoke at. And there's a video of me standing with Salman that you can see. I think it's been uploaded to the AUK YouTube channel. Oh, that's a little, little, bit of, little bit of promo I've done for myself there. Yeah. Your brush with greatness, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so moving on, the in Los Angeles, a demonstration has occurred on the 405 freeway overpass where the demonstrators gave Nazi salutes and held up several banners, including one that read, Kanye is right about the Jews. <laughs> so I'm going to start with simply, Kanye was right. Those three words should never be in that order. <laughs> yes. yes, absolutely. So what, what has happened is that... Uh, President Biden's administration has condemned this. His uh, White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, except that I think in American that would be pronounced Jean Pierre. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> and and uh, she has said uh, that Biden ran for president to heal the soul of the nation. I don't know whether that was um, on his right shoe or his left shoe, that soul. Uh -huh. But, uh, but it, uh, he had to heal this soul because of years of hate and division. And uh, he wanted to condemn anti-Semitism wherever it rears its ugly head. So what do you say about that, guys? Oh, can I say something, please? Um, Firstly, I would like to do my duty as a teacher here and tell everybody that there's currently a documentary on the History Hit um, channel. It's called mm. Barbarossa, The Lost Diaries. And mm. it contains the diaries that were discovered recently of a German panzer lieutenant, Lieutenant Sander. And it's a fascinating insight into the mind of somebody who has been indoctrinated by fascism. And simultaneously with that, there's a very good series on Netflix, Hitler, A Career. And from the very first moment that I saw that Donald Trump was running for president um, in 2016, I was appalled by how much he sounds exactly like Adolf Hitler. Mm. And sitting, watching that documentary and, uh, and the series on, on Netflix, it is frightening how... Donald Trump, uh, the MAGA movement, has oh. taken the combination of religion and the American right, evangelical right in America, and weaponized it yes. to, to take... Uh, it is frightening. I, I wonder how many people realize that, that I think we are on the brink of something similar to what happened in 1938 because the ideas are still very much alive and what Kanye West has done and, and what Donald Trump and his mega movement has done is proof of that, that somebody can stand on an overpass and be openly pro-Nazi. Let's hear from the Americans. 
Well, I think she's right on the right on the money with that. I have those same kind of concerns, the same kind of feelings, uh, same view of uh, the way things are shaping up here. It's uh, you know I don't think it's as serious as it was in Germany um, before World War II started, but at some point, what we're experiencing now was no less serious than what was happening in Germany. And uh, doc, the, the use of propaganda, it, 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 that was a powerful tool uh, for the Nazi party. And uh, I think uh, Donald Trump and his Trumpists uh, are very good at that too. Very good at lying and making it sound like the truth. It's downright scary. Mm. Anybody else? For me, the one big difference is that Donald Trump doesn't believe any of this. Donald Trump only believes in Donald Trump. Exactly. Yeah. Even, even during the campaign in 2016, Donald Trump in front of a live camera, it, you know, nobody can claim that it was, he didn't know the camera was live or anything. He was looking right into a news camera. And he said, I just say things. And if they cheer, I say it again. And hmm. if they cheer that night, then I say it again tomorrow night. And if they cheer several nights in a row, then I go on saying it. He doesn't know what's going to come out of his mouth. He doesn't believe any of it. There's no theme behind it other than the superiority of Donald J. Trump. Hmm. The um, Now, the people who follow him have become even more dangerous than Donald is because they are now electing uh, not only into statewide and national level um, offices, people who believe those kinds of things, believe the election lies, etc. But the probably the scariest part to me is that they are uh, electing people into smaller, less well-known positions that actually control how an election is run and how the ballots are counted. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. those races with complete believers in the election lies, the lies about uh, mail-in votes, the lies about the electronic machines, those people can in fact change the entire course of the election regardless of how the people actually vote. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Worrying. Very worrying. And Ty, did you want to say something? Yeah, it'd be um it's really it is a uh powerful analogy to reference Hitler and Nazism, but it's overplayed in in many instances to the point where um, even to the people who are uh, sympathetic to like the analogy that's trying to be made um, can can make a remark that you don't have to. There are a lot of bad dictators in the 1940s, a lot of bad dictators or would be even up to that point up to now. And I think uh, a really good analogy, uh, another perhaps less often used analogy, but much more simple would be the pig Napoleon from Animal Farm, because that is in its own right, a systematic uh, description of how what was a healthy democracy can, can quickly turn into a fascist government that has no interest right. in the will of the people. And you can see every playbook, step-by-step, -step, uh, ordinance, tactic, uh, every devious plot, by the main character spelled out and the fact that they insist that it wasn't the case and that they can gaslight their their loyal fan base of sycophants demonstrates this is what we're susceptible to not just back then but to now but now and when you when you um when you uh make it as abstract as animals then you realize it's not just nazis because we know we don't like nazis we already know that in our head like nazis is bad most people say it bad but if it's like a pig on a farm who's talking and he's t saying these very enticing things and people are willing to listen to it without yeah. doing any fact checking or when lies are clearly being given out, but you're so in invested in the tribalism of the matter that you don't realize that mm. you 
you've already fallen into the camp of I don't care what he says as long as it's him saying it. Um, we run into a lot of problems, and um, I, I recommend that the next time anyone tries to recommend Hitler, think about Napoleon from Animal Farm. It's it's just as an apt as a comparison, and I feel like it comes with much less of the baggage. Good yeah. point. Very good point. I, I agree I with think, you. Dr. Again, Dyer. Sorry, but we're running up against time okay. again. Yeah. It's hard. But, Again, I agree with everything that's been said, but what we've got there is another potential program. Let's talk about it one day along the lines of, have we progressed at all since, you know, the middle 30s when Hitler rose to power? H has humanity become more uh, wise to the risk of these sort of rabble-rousers? That would make a program in itself, wouldn't it? Uh -huh. Or have we become... Or have we become complacent in our democracy and the exercise of democracy? That's yeah. what's happening. Mm. So I'm going to push you on to the next item in the in the news because I, I just want to finish this one because rapper Yi, formerly known as uh, um, Kanye, oh, yeah. has lost his contract with Adidas. So this business has cost him millions. Who's sorry? Not me. No hands. No. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> especially, so, so especially because he bragged. He bragged yes. that they could never take that contract off him. He was he was so full of himself. So yeah. to watch well, that just yanked off him. Yeah, he had yeah. good reason because it was the best contract that Adidas has ever had. So they sacrificed. Oh, you're saying Adidas. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> there, you there, there you go with your I'm American funny, funny. syllable. I'm pretty right sure there. it is Adidas. But okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I'm like, the whole time, I'm just like, who is Adidas? All right, go <laughs> continue, please. Well, we'll be back to arguing about uh, kilometers and kilometers next, won't we? <laughs> anyway, moving on. A cannabis church in Southern California historically was shut down by the county of San Bernardino, who accused it of illegally functioning as a dispensary. Okay, so the news is it's taking its fight to reopen to the Californian State Supreme Court, and its argument is that it uses cannabis for religious healing. Okay. Well, I think, I think all churches should spray uh, spread cannabis and, the, and enforce the use of cannabis because they'd be much less violent if everybody were high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I like the sound of that, absolutely. Yeah. So their attorney says, religious rights are important. And he goes on to say that I'm not sure the California Supreme Court will make the ultimate determination. I think it might require us to go to the U.S. Supreme Court. And you can see his eyes revolving with dollar wow. signs, can't you? Wow. So I, I never really thought about this before, but in some churches, the communion is done with real wine, right? That's right. Um, and do, is anybody carding the supplicants who take the wine? I don't think no. so. No. And so the churches have gotten away with giving out wine to minors yes. because it's, it's part not of a religious of celebration. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we do, in fact, have uh, relig uh, legal waivers for certain religious groups to utilize um, hallucinogens in their religious ceremonies. Really? Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. Indian, there are American Indians that are permitted to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you so, go. I, I think they may have an actual argument here. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, I, I'd be in favor of potheads taking over if it was a choice between them and alcoholics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, thanks for that. Um, you'll be pleased to hear that the USA, uh, there's been a, a another poll by the Barna Group, which is hosted by the Arizona Christian University, and they've discovered that the USA is belatedly following the developed world in rejecting the intellectual absurdity and justification for hate that is Christianity today. <laughs> and I've got some, some screenshots, which I'm not going to put up, up now, but because uh, we're running out of time. But uh, you can see them. If you go to the Global Atheist News uh, show that I uploaded yesterday, it's all reported there, and it's only a 20-minute show. Meanwhile, the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, has legalized abortion bounties. Now, what this means is that people who, who uh, shop might be a word that I would use, but uh, you might have a different word in America, report to state authorities women who, have, who are getting abortions. They can get a payment of $10,000 for oh, it's, it's a bounty hunting opportunity. And you can imagine that workers on the poverty line in Texas are pleased that they can, they can get paid for this enterprise. Is there a flip side, sorry for interrupting. Is there a flip side punitive measure that's against the, the, the bounty? I couldn't tell you. Then that's a loophole because I'll then you can just have two friends who just keep, you know, like why don't we just keep getting pregnant and keep you get ten thousand, I get ten thousand, you get ten thousand, you get and then we get the hell out of here. That's a movie in the making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah, buddy mm. well, why one of the yeah. challenges to last year's I think it was last year that Abbott uh, enacted the law um allowing individuals to sue for uh, against someone who had either had an abortion or assisted someone to have an abortion. You're exactly yeah. right. It, it, it wasn't done for profit, but they intentionally had two people who knew each other do this in order to challenge it in court, not mm -hmm. that much, but to create the court challenge. Yeah. Um, and certainly one of the I think you're absolutely right. I think one of the ways that people are going to challenge the law is by intentionally reporting mm. each other mm. uh, in order to make the law so obviously ridiculous that they have to repeal it. Yeah, yeah. It's a good business opportunity too, isn't it? I guess yeah. I guess when you look when you look at it from that angle, but then you must think about there are children who are who've been born already, who are in the care system. And there are mm. loads of these children that have no one coming for them. They've got no family members, right? Why are we not caring for these children? Why are we offering money for people who want to uh, have an abortion when the children who are here with us, who are alive and well, but are in the care systems, we care nothing about? Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's because we only believe we're only pro-life for the unborn. Once they're right. born, they have to fend for themselves. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then the same the same people will tell the child. Um, now, is it? I'm, I'm, I heard someone saying, "Is it not better off that that child is not born and goes straight to heaven, if children oh. in the womb are um, innocent?" But when they're born, now they get to the age of accountability where uh, they've got to then subscribe to this religion. Otherwise, they're going to hell. So is it not better that that child is not even born? And I guess I uh, I, I can see where they're coming from with that argument, you know, because now this child would then have to be indoctrinated and now faces you know, the, the, the fear of going to hell in the consequences of being born is that you are born with a condemned nature, right? You're condemned already, straight as you're born from your mother's womb. Original sin. I think you've spotted a weakness in the Christian doctrine there, Esther. Yeah. <laughs> one, okay. Of, one, of, one of several. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we're going to take apart South Africa next, Tercia, because... Yay! <laughs> 
<laughs> because in, in Johannesburg, the Pride March uh, it wants to go ahead. I think it actually did it today. Yeah, it was and today. And as far as I know, nothing happened. Thank you. Oh, right. Okay. Well, you can bring Thank us up to that then. Because yeah. for a while, it looked as though they were going to cancel it. It's the 33, the 33rd edition of this Pride March in that city. And they were wondering, so they consulted. And eventually they decided that it was very hard to postpone Pride. It was very hard to proceed with Pride. And deciding whether or not to attend is another hard decision. But they decided to go ahead and they urged people to remember the essence of why Pride began. It was, for all intents and purposes, a protest action because the African continent has a very marginalized LGBTQ plus community that lives under constant attack. Sure. And there's constant fear of being arrested in 33 of the 54 African countries. Not, and, and if they're arrested, they're lucky. Um, sometimes they're just killed in their own communities um, without even having afforded the opportunity of going to court. They just, killed that's the worst part. yes an easily marginalized group yes with religious backing to, mm. to support it okay finally and this has gone on for at least 10 minutes longer than i intended but it's been such good stuff i haven't wanted to bring it to a close this is our last item nebraska a right-wing pastor name of hank kuniman delivered a, a sermon this past Sunday attacking the Democratic Party, claiming that the left is boiling children to be eaten. <laughs> oh, no, Boy, boiling is never the best option. <laughs> no, no. What's, what's the best option? Well, I haven't cooked, I haven't cooked um, with, with, uh, with a vinaigrette sauce, um, very... <laughs> cooked with onions and baked potatoes that's the best i assure you that's the only way to do it i mean really no I other way I guess, we, know, I guess we know what tessia is having for dinner i'm taking notes of your recipe lunch, here lunch. lunch okay so what he said because he's he is a he's described as being filled with the spirit of god <laughs> well, he's filled with something <laughs> Oh, I get it. <laughs> and he's, he said, he said, the donkey party, that's the De Democrats, you know, that in itself, that's not an insult because the Republicans are represented by an elephant. So they're just chosen animals. The anti-Christian move movement, the anti-true God movement. Now they've gone after the children and you can have some dude dressed in a wig who calls themselves a woman and he comes to your school and he reads to your children. Hell no, not in my school, not to my kid. I don't want no pervert and I don't want no pedophile in my school reading to my kids and I don't want their curriculum. How many more kids are going to have to be boiled, eaten because you won't do anything, pastor. You won't do anything, Christian, because you don't want to get involved in politics. Do you think the perverts are going to reform America? Well, now we know how people get indoctrinated to do things like stab Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. They attend sermons like that. Yeah. Um, I, I was going to say in the earlier discussion that uh, we should also remember that it's not only in places like Iran that religion has become infused with politics. In Iran, it's very overt, but uh, in, in places like the United States and many African Christian countries, uh, religion is as much infused with politics as in places like Iran. It's just not so overtly done. And the the result is always mayhem and suffering. Mm -hmm. They are sort of blood brothers, aren't they? In, in bed together. Yeah. 
Guys, you've been tri tr wonderfully wonderful. And Swedish Steve has been con commenting in the chats, which uh, I I'd like to save and uh, discuss later. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to bring this to an end now. Thank you very much, guys. This wouldn't have been much of a show without you. So I'm beside myself with gratitude. <laughs> Come again next week. And no, thanks for watching. Right, Say bye bye. Bye bye. Oh my God. Several clergy. Uh, was, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that guy?